Welcome. This video is for high school or career center counselors or administrators showing you how to manage registration tasks in dual enroll. This is a part two of a two part series. Part one, we looked at managing the application tasks in dual enroll for students. This part manages registration tasks for students. So as always, you'll start at ivtech.dualenroll.com. Counselors and career center administrators log in using the menu on the left. If you can't remember your login information, you can't always use the forgot your username or password link to find your way back into dual enroll. So we do have a couple of updates for 2022. I'll touch those things along the way. One of those new updates we have is counselors now have access to a courses menu. If you click on that, it will show you the courses available currently at your high school or career center. So this is the same view that students have when they go to select courses. You could sort by term here to narrow things down if you'd like to. You can also enter keywords or you can narrow down using any of the identifiers here to just filter for the career center courses, high school courses, et cetera. So college counselors, I'm sorry, high school counselors and administrators can now see the exact same menu that students see. This is also a handy way to confirm your courses prior to registration. You can come in and just verify that everything that students should see is listed on this menu. You will want to monitor the student dashboard on a daily basis as a high school counselor or administrator. And we're gonna to touch on just a few things to look out for here. But first, you do have some filters available here as well. So you could filter this page based on a specific course. If you wanna just manage registrations one course at a time. The counselor filter, you can filter it just to students who have selected you as their counselor. But in general, we recommend you leave this on all counselors to ensure that you could see all students who may be attempting to register for classes at your high school. You can filter for terms as well. Generally, we recommend you leave this on all active terms. Again, so you see all the current registrations. And then you could filter this by step as well. This is where it becomes really helpful to be able to filter some of these tasks by specific steps. We're gonna look at those real quick. So you could see your task as an administrator that you are responsible for are highlighted in yellow. That means you need to take action on those. But if you scroll down, you could see a variety of other tasks as well. Some of the tasks for instructors are not highlighted, but they are hyperlinked, which means you can clear these items if you need to as an administrator. So for some reason, your high school instructor is not able to clear some of their instructor confirmed student enrollment tasks. You as a counselor do have that ability to clear these tasks if you need to as well. One thing you might see on occasion is this high school confirmed student enrollment and course step. So we'll click on that. We have one of those hanging about. What that means is that the instructor for this class has not yet set up their account in dual enroll. So there's not an instructor account for this task to come to yet. So it goes to the next person in line, which is you. So once your instructor sets up their dual enroll account, it will reroute this task back to the instructor. So that's where it's helpful to follow up. If you see your instructor here uh, and you see the high school confirmed student enrollment step, check in with that instructor, make sure they have set up their dual enroll account by logging in with their My Ivy credentials. If you need to clear this task, you can clear it by clicking that item as well, confirming the student is in that particular course or choosing the student is not enrolled. This option does cancel the student registration at this time. The confirmed student allows the registration to proceed from here. If the instructor chooses that second option, the student is not enrolled, then it sends the registration to the high school counselor and it shows up as this step. So high school resolve student not enrolled means that the instructor has chosen that the student should not be enrolled in their particular section of the course. So it gives you as the high school or career center counselor the chance to double check that registration and act on it if needed. So you can clear this step as well. Click on this. It will give you the option to confirm the student into the correct course. If they did indeed need to be in that class, maybe the instructor just made a mistake, you can correct that here. Or perhaps the student is in Design 101, but is in a different section. So that instructor didn't recognize the student in their class. 
But you as a counselor can pull up their schedule and see ah, the student needs to be in this class. So you can switch their registration and send that along down a different pathway with the correct course registration. If you click cancel here, that means the registration will be canceled. The student will be notified that they are not registered in this class and they can choose a different course if they need to. Notice when you filter by the step, you have a really helpful option that pops up here on your status menu. So there's a step actions menu, and that gives you the chance to complete tasks in batch mode. That means rather than clicking one by one, it's gonna let you do them in list view. So it shows you all your tasks that you have available, typically 30 tasks on one page at a time. So you can quickly move through and confirm some of these students or cancel as you need to, review those registrations quickly at a glance and move on with your day. So that batch mode is a really helpful way to clear your tasks that you are responsible for here in Dual Enroll in a timely basis. One of the most important tasks that you will see as a high school administrator or counselor is the high school provide additional test scores step. So that means that a student registration has gone to our system but they could not be registered because they didn't yet have a prerequisite on file. So you can see there's a couple of steps in play here where the student does not meet the prereq. If you click this status message, you can see the error message that came back from our system indicating that student didn't meet a prerequisite for this course. As a counselor, you have a couple of different options available here. We're gonna choose just one of these. This does have the batch mode option, but it's gonna go through them one by one. So if you click on this, it's going to show you the student name. It's going to give you the course information. And this information up top has some really helpful reference points for you as a high school counselor to be able to manage some of these pieces. So you can see that information there. It lets you know the student's requested to be enrolled in a class. For specific prereq or co-rec requirements, we do have a link to the crosswalk right here on this page for you. So if you need to quickly consult with our dual credit crosswalk, you can do a quick search and look up and see exactly what the prerequisite requirement is on the crosswalk through the link on this page. You have three steps you can take at this point. You can provide additional qualifying test scores or a GPA if they qualify for a GPA waiver. Number two, you can refer the student to knowledge assessment. That way they know that they need to complete that knowledge assessment test to get things moving along. Uh, or number three, if it's past that knowledge assessment deadline, you have no other way to verify they meet the prerequisite, you can cancel the student registration. So you complete all of those steps by scrolling down the page. If you're gonna do step one by adding test score data, you can choose what test the student has taken. So if the student has done the PSAT test, you can add that here. You choose the date that they completed that PSAT test whatever date that might have been. And then you would put in the way that they qualify. So if they had a 500 on their evidence-based reading and writing, it's gonna have a, a more accurate label here for you in the live environment. We're using the stage environment today. You can add that information right there because we know that would qualify for COM 101. If the student also meets the GPA waiver, you can enter a GPA waiver here but it's really important that you only enter a GPA if the student qualifies based on these three criteria. So the student has to have completed four semesters of high school coursework. So generally they're gonna be a junior or a senior. They have to be on the core 40 or higher diploma track, and they have to have a 2.6 or higher GPA at the time that you're entering the scores. And that is on a 4.0 scale. So if your school happens to use a different scale, like a 12 point scale, you'll need to convert that into a four point scale by dividing their GPA by three. So if they meet all three of those criteria, you can also enter their GPA here. You can select a date and you can resubmit that course registration request and let it proceed through. So that's gonna go back to Banner. It's gonna send that information to our Banner registration system. And it's also gonna re-register the student in the class. So once Banner has that prerequisite information you provided, it's gonna send that registration back through and then it's gonna register the student. Couple other options. We have a few other options to look at. So in this case, the student has 
a math 136 class they're attempting to register for. Perhaps you verified that they don't yet meet the prerequisite requirement for that math class. I did forget to mention in the previous step, but if the student already has assessment scores on file, those will show up here. So if they've already done the knowledge assessment, that score is gonna show up here under available scores. The same with the PSAT and other pieces. If there are scores on file in our system, they will show up here so you can see what's there. But in this case, we're gonna say the student does not yet meet the requirement. I'm gonna send the student to the knowledge assessment. That way they can fulfill this requirement. So in this case, the GPA waiver is already in there, but I can't use that. So I'm gonna notify the student and parent and activate the student complete knowledge assessment step. What's really helpful on this step is if you give a description here in the comments as the counselor and let the student know exactly what it is that they need to complete. So here I'm gonna leave a note to please complete the STEM math knowledge assessment that alerts the student that they need to do that knowledge assessment. It's gonna complete the step for the student. And at that point, it is gonna send this to the student for them to complete the knowledge assessment. We're gonna look at what that looks like real quick from the student side. So now this is Jimmy's registration for college algebra. If he logs into dual enroll, he's gonna have a yellow step and it's gonna say student complete knowledge assessment. And if he clicks on that, it's gonna look exactly like this. So it's gonna give him some information. His request couldn't be completed until he fulfills the necessary prerequisite. It's gonna let him know he needs to complete the knowledge assessment. And then it's gonna give him some links to the My Ivy Setup video and also the knowledge assessment setup video that is available on our YouTube channel. Gives him a baseline of the required scores on each of those assessments. So if he's taking the STEM math, he knows he needs to hit a 70. And then you can see that note is here for him as well that you put in asking him to complete the STEM math knowledge assessment. I was playing around with this a little earlier so you could see a previous note that was in there. So on the student side, once they complete their knowledge assessment, they just need to come back and mark complete on that step. You as a counselor also have the availability to complete the step on the student's behalf. It's gonna give you a warning that you're completing this step for the student. Generally, we want the student to take responsibility to mark that as completed on their side, if at all possible. But if you know they've done the knowledge assessment, but they just haven't cleared this step yet, then you can come in and complete that step on their behalf as well. There are some special cases where you might see a prerequisite requirement for a class that is not necessarily a course level prerequisite. So we're gonna look up one student. Let me clear a step in the background here real quick. And we'll look at an example of that. <clears throat> Clearing things on the back side real quick. There we go. So our foreign languages is a great example of this particular dynamic where there is a course that has a course prerequisite instead of a testing prerequisite. So now we're gonna look at high school provide additional test score step. And we see that this student, student Stuart Dent, registered for Spanish 201. It's gonna come back with the exact same error message that the student does not meet the prerequisite. It's gonna give you the same options here. So this doesn't look any different, but we have noted here that the co or prereq may be registration or credit in another dual credit course. So it's important here to recognize that the prereq for Spanish 201 is not a testing prereq, but they have to have Spanish 102 credit before they can register for Spanish 201. We see a lot of times, especially in this case, this is our college Spanish level three. If a student is in high school Spanish three on Ivy Tech side, that is Spanish 101 and 102, but they might see Spanish level three and accidentally register for 201 when they meant to register for 101. So this is a case where you have the option to come down and say the student does not meet that course prereq and you can add a note here, please register for Spanish 
101 is to let the student know they've registered for the wrong course. So if you're seeing a course prerequisite or a class that you know has a course prerequisite pop up on that high school provide additional score step, it's really important to catch those because if you send them back through to resubmit the registration request, it's just going to bounce back again and again for you uh, until it's resolved. So we're going to cancel this registration and leave the student a note to register for the correct class. So once you complete that, it will notify the student that they need to go back and choose the correct course to be registered for. So that is a overview of some of the tasks for the high school counselor role in dual enroll. It's important, especially during the registration period to come back in and clear these on a timely basis. After the knowledge assessment deadline is passed, it's particularly important to come back in and cancel any registrations if a student genuinely has not met that prerequisite. So students may have registrations hanging out there after the knowledge assessment deadline is passed, we need these registrations to be cleared out and terminated. That way they're just not hanging out there indefinitely. So that's where it's important to resolve that step. That way students know what's going on. That way everybody understands what's happening along the pathway. As a reminder, at any point as a high school counselor, you could see the workflow by clicking on the ellipse at the side. So you can look up the course history. This will show you where things have gone from here, who has started, who has continued the process, who cleared what step. You also have the option to see any notifications that went out specific to this course. So if you click on notifications, you could see those notices as well. In this case, you can actually see <clears throat> the actual email or the text messages that went out to students. That way, if you're not clear, if a student got a message that they were required to get, you can look that up and see that they received the messages that you intended for them to receive. Finally, if there is a registration that you know a student should not have been registered in, you do have the option to abandon this registration. So that just ends the process entirely. The better path is to clear it through the path just to be able to make notes along the way about why registrations were ended. Uh, but if you have a student, say, who exits your school prior to the enrollment deadline, you know that they're not going to be taking those classes. The abandon option is a quick way to just abandon those student registrations. That way you don't have to complete all of the steps through the process.